All right, all right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, our honor, and our glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders, a great millstone at Ruel. Peace and blessings and much salutation to your elect Akiam across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to you all. I'm the brother Shahar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. Lord willing, it's edifying. And um, I was just doing some some meditating on a particular on a particular um, well, well I should say particular things in the scriptures and um, a thought that came to my mind when I was doing some thinking it was um, how Israel had seen the Lord face to face and I had touched up on this briefly some months back within a lesson that I had done you know but um, was just meditating on it again and as we understand we read certain scriptures and um, certain scriptures might seem repetitive. But um, that's the same thing with certain lessons that we do, certain lessons that we do. You might have done a lesson prior to that going into the same thing. But later on, you might have thought about it in um, pretty much certain points that you might not have been able to bring out within the past lesson. You might bring about in the lesson that you might do later on as pertaining to that similar subject. All right. And again, this uh, subject going into how we had seen the Lord face to face. All right. Now, when you read this here. In Exodus, let me get it real quick. <clears throat> Bear with me one sec. It's so like I'm just a little under the weather right now, so if you hear me snorting and everything, you know how it is, shit. Whack ass bodies we got. All right. So this is the book of Exodus, the 33rd chapter. All right, and um, when you read about this, Okay, um, this is when ex uh, Moses had constantly inquired of the Lord. All right, the Lord had actually revealed himself unto Moses when he went on Mount Sinai. All right, now the thing about it is, you know, you read this here, which I'm about to get going into how Moses had spoke to the Lord face to face. And I'm going to read this here in the book of um, Exodus, the 33rd chapter and the 11th verse. All right. And really, I'm going to start at around. I'm going to start at verse eight and it reads, and, when, and it came to pass when Moses went out of, out into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man on his tent door and looked after Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And Yahweh talked with Moses. All right. So this was taking place within the tabernacle. OK. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand in the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And Yahweh spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, the young man departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Yahweh, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wast sent to me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, and I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. All right, so... This goes into a, a conversation that Moses had with the Heavenly Father. All right. And the Lord spoke with Moses face to face within a tabernacle. And this was an event that the whole congregation had bore witness to. All right. And it said he spoke to him face to face as uh, he was his friend. All right. Because when you read about it, Moses and the Most High were friends. Now, when it says face to face right here, that doesn't mean that the Lord literally showed his face unto Moses. That means that they had that relationship to one another where they could communicate with one another. All right. When it says face to face, it doesn't literally mean that the heavenly father spoke to Moses and Moses had bore his face. All right. Because the scriptures say who had seen the face of the most high and lived. You can't see the actual face of the heavenly father. All right. We're not in our glorified bodies. OK. Even in the heavens, the Lord doesn't really reveal his face like that to the angels. When you read about it in Isaiah. All right, you have those cherubims that stand in front of him with the wings covering his face and the wings covering his feet. Okay, 
because his face is that holy. All right. Now, again, what I want to touch on is face to face and how when you go into that, that just goes into a relationship that Moses had with the Most High. They had that bond together. OK. And just as Moses had Moses and the Heavenly Father. All right. Had dealt with each other. All right. We also deal with the Heavenly Father, um, not in the same magnitude as Moses. Of course not. All right. But just as Moses had had that relationship with the Most High. All right. We ourselves have relationships with the Heavenly Father in smaller fashions than Moses, but they're still huge fashions when you look at it compared to the rest of the world. Okay? I'm going to read this out in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, and I wanted to touch on a few things after I read this. This is Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to start at the fourth verse. Actually, I'm going to start at the top. It says, And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statues and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. But Yahweh our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. All right, now that was a covenant. When you read about it, um, when you read about it in um, Exodus, okay, I can't remember the exact chapter, I believe. Matter of fact, it's in Exodus, the 24th chapter. All right, when Moses that came down from Mount Sinai, or actually before he went on Mount Sinai, he had made 12 pillars. All right, he made 12 pillars of stone. And then he reestablished the covenant unto the nation of Israel, okay, where he had those young men slay, slay a lamb, all right, and the blood of that lamb was put into a basin. And that blood that was in the basin was sprinkled on the altar, all right, and it was also sprinkled amongst the congregation. And that's where Israel had agreed that they would do the things, all right, that were, um, that were commanded of them in that book, all right, that was when the covenant was being reaffirmed unto the nation, all right, again, you read about that in Exodus, the 24th chapter. Okay, and then after that had taken place, Moses had went on Mount Sinai, and that's when he had, when um, the Lord had spoke to him. Okay, verse um, verse two, it says, Yahweh our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, and Yahweh made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Yahweh talked with you face to face in Mount in the Mount of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time because Moses was um, was our mediator. All right. To show you the word of Yahweh, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, saying, I am Yahweh thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. All right. Now, the key points were going into verses four and verse five, because you read about how the Lord talked with us face to face in the book of uh, Exodus, the 19th chapter. OK, you remember there was a list of um, a list of instructions that was to be done. OK, you remember um, the wise men were supposed to stand at the bottom of the, uh, of the mountain while Moses was up on the top of the mountain. All right. And that's where the cloud of the Lord had came. The chariots came down and there was an earthquake and Jake got scared. Jake started fearing. All right. Even bearing witness to the Lord's power, even bearing witness to that magnificent sight, Moses still considered that speaking with us face to face all right and again just another example to show you that it doesn't necessarily mean he has to physically come down and talk to you in person all right the relationship that we have with yahweh bashim yahweh right now being able to understand these scriptures being able to understand the things that were written and also being gifted the utterance, okay? Remember when Yahweh Shai said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open it, I will come in and I will sup with him. All right? Now, we have that unction. We have that anointing, okay? We have that access to be able to bear the power of the Lord, and that's through faith. That's not through the bodily eyes that we have right now. That's through the understanding of the things that we've read in the past. All right? Yahweh Shai loosening those seals and sending us that comforter in the form of the Holy Spirit, all right, being within us, and that's where we deal with the Lord constantly, face to face. We have that relationship with the Heavenly Father. All right, that's why I wanted to bring these actual physical examples out. All right, because um, as we read these things and we have faith in these things, right there, a door is open where that access of that belief enters inside of you, man. All right, now there's times where brothers see chariots, brothers have visions. Brothers see certain things, man. All right. Now, granted, even the scriptures say I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and everybody's having dreams about the end of the days or whatever's going on. But they don't have understanding about it. We've actually been given the gift of understanding. We've been given 
eyes to see, ears to hear. All right, we've been given the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding toward we do read particular scriptures and receive the breakdowns from our apostles and teachers and elders. When down, we have the understanding, we have that relationship with the Lord to be able to understand his word. We do have particular dreams and visions sometimes where we understand what it means because we are in the knowledge. All right, we do have particular examples where we do see the chariots You'll call on to the Lord and the Lord will send a fleet of chariots by or whatever the case is. Brothers, we've seen the Lord face to face. We have that relationship with him. All right. Now, um, what I want to say right now, a lot of it's going to be directed toward um, younger brothers. I myself am a younger brother, you know, and um, even brothers that have been in this thing um, maybe a year, two years, maybe even three years. You're going to come a, a, in a time all right, where you're going to see certain ups and downs in the spirit. There's going to be certain instances where you're on fire. There's going to be certain instances where you're not on fire as you thought. You're going to have certain instances where you feel the essence and the power of the Lord there vibrating around you. And there's certain times you'll have thoughts where you ain't even a man of the Lord. Okay. Now, the thing about it is when you have those thoughts, you don't succumb to those thoughts. But when you do have those thoughts, of course, you got to pray first and foremost. All right. Because these are just trials and tribulations, things that we go through at the end of the day, all right? But when you do have those thoughts and when you do experience those type of things where you might feel like, dang, you know, you might have screwed up or whatever the case is, you might think, man, I hope the Lord's still dealing with me, whatever the case is, think back to the understanding that you've received. Think back to the unction. Think back to how the Lord has blessed you to be able to see and understand these scriptures, and knowing what's in these scriptures, you're going to go through certain seasons where you're not on fire. You understand that Satan was sent down to tempt and afflict Job. You understand that Satan tempted and afflicted Peter. He did it to uh, Paul, so forth. These are seasons that we go through, but that does not take the fact the way that the Lord is dealing with you. All right. We bear the Lord face to face. All right. We experience his, pres his presence and his power daily. All right. His presence and his power daily. Sometimes you don't have to look in the sky and see chariots flying by or, you know, sometimes you don't have to bear witness to a particular miracle. Now, when you do bear witness to those things, it's beautiful. And those are extreme faith enhancements. All right. But also, too, you got to think about the certain occasions of Thomas and Yahawashai. You remember Yahawashai, Yahawashai um, told Thomas to put his finger in the holes of his hand. And that's where Thomas believed fully. Not right. And Thomas's faith was weak around that time. And Yahweh Shai said, blessed are those that that don't see and do believe. All right. Because at the end of the day, you might not see with bodily eyes, but you see it within spirit. You see it within faith. OK. You bear witness to you bear witness to the power and the presence of the Lord face to face daily. When you open up the scriptures and you read. And, all right. And there's a certain breakdown that the apostles give. And you read into it and your eyes are open. It's like, damn. When you read particular scriptures, you go into certain words and you find different connections. You're bearing witness to the power of the Lord, man. All right. You're bearing witness to him face to face because all that goes into is just a personal relationship that you have with the Lord. And he sucked with you and opened your mind up to be able to receive these things. All right. I'm going to read this here in Hebrews 11. This is Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. All right. For it, for for by it, the elders obtain a good report through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the most high so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. OK, now I wanted to go into that point. OK, because, yeah, you had certain examples where, when our fathers actually physically seen things. All right. Joshua and them literally saw the sun stop. OK, they literally saw the sun stand firm in its tracks. For a period of time where it didn't, you know what I'm saying, where, the, where it stayed day. Okay. Our people bore witness to the Red Sea split. All right. Our people seen a whole lot of things and we've been gifted faith to believe these records, to believe these accounts. All right. And when you read this, a lot of it excites you, especially when you find certain things in the scriptures that link. All right. Just as the Lord had revealed himself unto us in Horeb in the form of those chariots. When you read the scriptures and have particular understanding, even having the knowledge you have right now was spoken of, it was supposed to happen in the scriptures. And that's just as big as the Lord appearing to us in Horeb, man. 
All right, because we've received understanding back. This is prophecy, a major prophecy that's being fulfilled. All right. Matter of fact, I got another preset I'm going to get. One sec. Yes, yeah, in um second Esther's chapter one. Hold on. All right, and the key points in verse thirty seven. But I'm gonna start at verse um thirty four. Now, this is talking about us, okay? It says, And your children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandments and done the things that is evil before me. All right? Now, th verse 35 is going to start talking about us. It says, Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. You remember there was a point in time when we were Gentiles. All right? And we had to come back into the truth. Paul talks about that. In um, 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, it says to whom I have shown no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Now, the thing about it is we believe we are the prophets and we believe that we do bear prophets that are around us. But we had came into the truth and we had woke up. All right. We didn't see the miraculous events that had taken place back in the ancient world. We didn't see the Red Sea split. We didn't see Moses put his hands in the air and set his staff down and see his staff turn into a serpent. Not right. We didn't see Elijah cry to the Lord and rain came down. We didn't see Elijah cry to the Lord and fire came down and smote the altar. We didn't see none of these things. All right. Not with bodily eyes. It says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. That has faith. And that faith will take us all the way to salvation within this belief system that we have. And best believe there is going to come a time where the Lord is going to openly show things. I mean, he's been openly showing things. But as things were done in the ancient world where he set certain standards and intervened in very miraculous ways, he's going to do it today. But the point of it is we have that relationship with the most high face to face. And sometimes face to face doesn't mean that you have to see something in a bodily fashion, but you receive it through the spirit. So just remember that when you're down and out, you, you feel like, you know, you got things going on. I mean, of course, pray when you feel that way, you know, fast. But don't let that be the end all be all of your faith, because the heavenly father is dealing with all of us in a face to face fashion. All right. We all have that relationship with Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, where he he granted us the understanding that we've received. All right. And we, we really should have the mind state of being suffice just off of that, because really the Heavenly Father didn't have to give us this word as it's written. He could have raised up stones to do this. But the spiritual part about it is he did raise up stone and stones and we do represent those stones. OK. But we do deal with the most high face to face. As he had dealt with us face to face in the wilderness when you read it in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, we have that relationship with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Through the blood of Yahweh Shai, that was given back to us. This is our heritage. All right. I'm going to end off on uh, one more scripture in Corinthians. I believe it's in 1 Corinthians 13. Let me see. Yeah. This is 1 Corinthians chapter. Um, 13 and i'm going to start at verse 9 it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part now when you read that all right we understand and we know what the scriptures say pertaining to the way that we're going to be saved all right pertaining to the new bodies pertaining to spiritual power pertaining to the kingdom of heaven and the shy coming back we speak on these things but we have not physically seen it done yet so we only know in part all right i'm sorry we know in part and we prophesy in part okay because best believe when that stuff takes takes place it's going to be in a way more major dramatic fashion than any of us could perceive verse 10 but when that which is perfect is come then that which is part shall be done away all right so then will the fulfillment of everything that we read and talk about and see in our minds be be fulfilled 
That's why it says, which is in part shall be done away. The things that we know in part and prophesy in part of are going to be done away because we're going to see everything in its fullness on what these scriptures were talking about. All right. We via example, we read about it in, um, in, in Exodus, the 14th chapter, how the Red Sea split. Right. And we imagine it with our thoughts. All right. But we weren't there. So we know in part and prophesy in part. But we weren't really there. So we didn't see it. OK. We understand, we read how 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, talks about how Ezra seen a mountain come from the sky. And um, Yahawashai flew on the top of the mountain and burnt all those military units to a crisp. All right, it's very dramatic when you think about it, but none of us had seen it yet. All right, but it says, but when that which is perfect is come, all right, and ultimately that which is perfect is Yahawashai, but also to the things that were written in this book. All right, the words that was already established in the heavens when they are ultimately brought to us to to really see what it was in enti entirety to really see what he was talking about now right that's what he means but when it says but which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away all right check this out it says when i was a child i spake as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face okay now, while I was doing some research going into this, um, that um, the darkly and going into the glass. All right. Now, when you go into the city of Corinth, this is uh, the letter that Paul was. Um, this is the letter that Paul wrote to the to that church and also to us as well. But in Corinth, they had different type of uh, mirrors that were made of different silvers and brass and so forth. And there were certain glasses that you looked at where it was kind of distorted because it wasn't a natural glass that we have today. All right. When you look at like, for example, a, 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 a metal mirror or a bronze mirror, you're going to see an image of yourself back, but it's going to kind of be distorted. But, you know, it's there. All right. That's why he said for now we see through glass darkly, but then face to face because you see a distorted image. But, you know, the image is there. Right. For now, I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am. All right. So. Using this mirror as an example, all right, when you look at that mirror, you see a reflection of yourself, but also to that reflection of yourself is that being that 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 being that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai created in righteousness, man. All right, when you look in that mirror, you're supposed to see yourself, but you're also supposed to see an image or a reflection of Yahweh Shai because that's within you. Now, the thing about it is you have the image. We have the we have the deposit, the earnest expectation OK, we have that glory that's within us. But when that time comes, man, when that glory is perfected, it's going to be on a whole nother level. All right. On a whole nother level, man. OK, but the thing about it is, man, again, going back to that face to face, we have that relationship with the Lord, man. Just as we had that relationship in, with the Lord in the wilderness. All right. And again, this ain't we ain't talking about the older generation that died off neither. All right. We talking about the younger generation that was able to make it into the promise. All right. That was a symbolic representation of us. And just as they had seen the face of the Lord. All right. And just as they had dealt with the Lord face to face in the wilderness that you read about it in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. We have that like relationship with the Heavenly Father. Really, it's more. It's really it's a better relationship. All right. Because he didn't show us a bunch of things to see with eyes, but he had given us the gift of faith. All right. Because you remember. Even the generation that made it to the promised land, a lot of them still was going off and doing particular things. And they seen the power in the presence of the Lord. They seen those different things. All right. So how much greater do you have to apply today where you don't see those things that we had seen before, but we still believe in a way more greater fashion than our fathers that were in the wilderness, if that makes sense. All right. But hey, man, we have that relationship with the Lord. Whenever you down and out, whenever you going through certain things, remember you still have that relationship with the Lord. Now, right, you still have been gifted the access to the Lord to pray unto him when you are feeling that way, to fast when you are feeling that way, and so forth. All right. Again, Yahweh said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open it, I will sup with him. When you open that door, you've bore Yahweh face to face. All right. Remember, we can't really bear the Heavenly Father like that no more. He he stopped dealing with us and he had sent Yahweh and had given us to Yahweh Shai. All right. But Yahweh sits on the right hand side of his, our father. All right. His father. And he pretty much um, he's our advocate. OK. 
So, hey, man, Yahweh size in his glory. He has that power. Okay, and we had that power within us, man. We deal with it face to face. We have that relationship. We are his friends, man. That's why you read about it in John, the 15th chapter. Just as Moses said, I speak to you. This is like the Lord spoke to Moses and said he spoke to the Most High as he was his friend. We have that relationship with Yahweh Shai. All right, I believe that's in John, the 15th chapter. Let me see here. This is John 15 and 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he, shall, he may give it unto you. Okay, so just going into that, we have that access right now. Okay, Yahweh Shai was talking to his 12 here, but as he's talking to his 12, we got to remember that we represent his disciples as well. And as he had spoke to them, he's speaking to us too, man. All right, so Yahweh Shai is our friend. All right, we have that power. We deal with that energy face to face. Okay, and that's a very strong relationship. Dealing with the, dealing with the Son of the Most High face to face. And within that, you know, we have access back to the Father through Yahweh Shai. All right. And again, we've been deposited the Holy Spirit. We've been deposited a portion of power. All right. A portion of that glory. OK, hey, that's dealing with the Lord face to face. We have his power inside of us. That's a personal relationship right there. OK, so don't think of yourself as being insignificant. Don't think of yourself as being nobody. All right. You have the essence and the presence of the Lord within you, man. All right. The Lord deals with you and speaks to you face to face. All right. I'm going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, kicking us word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.